Classic 107.3 and 96.3 KNOU HD2 St. Louis. The voice for the arts in St. Louis. Oh, do I have a wonderful guest to welcome back this morning. I am so thrilled. If you've never heard of her or heard her before, you're going to thoroughly enjoy. And if, you, if you've if you heard her before, you're, you know you're going to enjoy Lynn Friedman Hamilton. She's the executive director of Maturity and its Muse. And it's such a great program. Good morning. It's so nice to have you here again, Lynn. Good morning, Kathy. I am grinning from ear to ear. It's uh-huh. it's always wonderful. I, I'm so fortunate to be able to be in this chair and look at you and talk to you. Well, may I say ditto. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you have a background not only as, of course, doing this, but you're a former gallery owner and an entrepreneur, a very accomplished lady. Well, thank you. I think probably I popped out with a sash on that said, I love art. Ah. And it's been going on all these years. It's a love affair that uh, never stops for me. Well, you know, and it's an interesting thing, too. We've been talking, uh, we haven't yet, but we will be talking about maturity and its muse and how the arts keep us so vibrant and alive and engaged in life. And uh, I think that's your your key word in my mind as we were preparing this was ignite. Well, it is igniting. And I guess, speaking for myself, uh, working on Maturity and its Muse, working with the people that come to the programs and working with uh, the organizations that want to share themselves with these people, ignites me. Uh, It is a reason for me every day uh, in my retirement years to to be busy and be busy in a productive way. Well, you certainly have that joie de vivre, that joy of living, <laughs> and it's it's just tremendous. Now, tell us about Maturity and its Muse, how this all started. Maturity and its Muse began in 2010 uh, when I decided that I wanted to look at artists over the age of 70 that were in this, from the St. Louis area and uh, showcase what they they did because they'd always been so helpful to everyone in the community. You never asked an artist if they would donate something to an event. They said, only one? I'd like to do two or three. Artists are, are very generous. Uh, some of these artists could have moved anywhere after school, but they stayed here and they, they contributed really a lot to the quality of life for all of us. So I decided to do a, a little show at the Sheldon of 40 St. Louis area artists, mm-hmm. and I got a taste of the fun that that was and the great joy I keep saying joy, but it is true. The happiness to get to work with artists because I admire them so much. So I just went on from there, and here we are. And here we are. <laughs> right. And then out of this maturity and its muse, you sort of have a an umbrella over another project, which we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about, which is Case Fest. Tell us the acronym. Well, Case Fest stands for Celebrating Art for Senior Engagement. It's rather long, but <laughs> it was hard to figure out what to call what this is. And one day, after talking with a lot of uh, people that have arts organizations in St. Louis, and they knew that I had a, a large following of, of people that would come to programs I put on. They kept encouraging me to bring these people to their museums, to to their th- theater, to the music that they create, because uh, they wanted to share it with people that may not know about them and, and hope that maybe it would ignite these people to do something on their own. So I decided, well, why not? I'll, you know, the old entrepreneur kicked in, and <laughs> that spirit, and I thought, well, I'll do a festival. There you and go. And there I am. <laughs> and this is year number four. And this is just, it's really thrilling because you involve so many people. Would you like to share with us like some of the folks that are involved in this? As far as members of the com- uh, community, community organizations, mm-hmm. well, we have the St. Louis Art Museum, Lawmeyer, Contemporary Art Museum, COCA, uh, the Saint- the Banjo Club in St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis County Library has a myriad of events uh, for people to go to. Uh, the St. Louis Nork, the Coven- Covenant Place St. Louis, um, the, we're going to participate at the VA in a, in a uh, fair for older people. Uh, Washington yes. University is involved through their Department of Music, through their Center for Aging. Uh, 
you know, just a lot of varied things. The Alzheimer's Association, um, Maryville University, uh, Crown Center for Senior Living, uh, Karlowski and Company. Uh, I know there's way more, but that gives you an idea. That's a tremendous sampling right there. Yeah. And a lot of these uh, groups then make it available to the participants to be able to learn more about how to do these things. There, it, is an, it is instructional in, in many ways, uh, and certainly the people that present are, are will, willing and happy to talk with people that come about things for the future. I know Vitality Ballet will be doing that when she does her program at COCA. It, it's, it's a very interesting way to, for people to get their little baby toe wet in an art form that they have always wanted to do but maybe didn't have the chance because they were raising a family and working one job and they're maybe working two jobs and the lawn needed cutting uh, and now they're empty nesters uh, and having the a time when they can have the time of their life and explore something new. And that's what this festival is, is all about. And 99% of the events are free. That's fabulous. So uh, you, everybody can just, just come out. And it doesn't matter if you're on a fixed budget because you can still enjoy all this. Absolutely. Most of the arts in St. Louis, I think our community, we're really fortunate that every so many places you go, um, there's no charge. No charge to coca no charge to CAM, no charge to the St. Louis Art Museum. Uh, right. These are all free. That's true. And, and even the St. Louis Zoo. Now, certain exhibits, of course, are charged, but, but the you know, all these things that we have here, we're so blessed. We really are. It's a wonderful place to live. I Should we tell a lot of people or keep it to ourselves? I never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're going to tell a lot of people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I follow you. Because, you know, I always call you the patron saint of, of the arts community in oh, St. Louis because you. Uh, you do so much to let everyone know what's going on in the community. And you do it with such a joy uh, and, and enthusiasm. Well, you know, the, the whole stage is is like this you know we that's really why we were founded we're celebrating our sixth anniversary you know this month and and that's really what we were put here for was you know to to be able to celebrate all the richness and depth and breadth of the arts that we have here in st louis so it's really our privilege to be able to do this and it is a joyous thing well i ride with you every day ah that's great i <laughs> yes. didn't know i was tagging along yes. i must make a lot of mileage going <laughs> <laughs> you don't look it <laughs> Oh, thank you. Well, now this big case fest is going to be, it's getting cranked up here. It and is getting cranked up. from today it starts. Oh, my goodness, that's so soon. Well, we have <laughs> we have wonderful events coming up uh, that are different, some that are different than what we've had in the past. Uh, I, I'd like to tell you about a couple Please. of them if, if this is Absolutely. okay. Um, I can mention for a start, I'll say April 20th, which is a week from Saturday at 2 p.m. at St. Louis County Library headquarters on Lindbergh across from Plaza Frontenac. We are showing a film. It's our film, Maturity and its Muse. And it was made when we, I did the show at the Sheldon in 2010. And it's interviews, beautifully done by a, a videographer from Washington University and his son. It's, it's exquisite the way he interjects these um, comments by, about the people for 39 minutes. And you're mesmerized. And you know what? Even though it was from 2010, what they say is just the way it is today. Um, you know, how an older person feels, how an artist feels, really doesn't change. I mean, you could have probably heard Matisse saying the same things because that's just how it goes. You know, like I'm still a kid in my heart of hearts. <laughs> I haven't always been a senior. Art gives me new life. It energizes me. You don't stop being an artist. And this is these are things that I really feel that artists never retire. They just keep on making art. You know, and I think if anything, the art becomes even deeper and more 
uh, more personal as the years go by because it, it, the layers of learning the, that the you've been through. The experience that you, that you come with and the techniques yeah. that you might decide you want to yeah. do. And so we're going to show this film and then have a panel discussion afterwards. And the uh, moderator will be Sarah Levinson. And uh, Sarah was actually a student at Washington University when, this, when we produced this film, and she was the interviewer for all of these artists then. So she's she is currently the um, manager of the St. Louis NORC, and uh, the the panelists will, were all in the film. Uh, Son Smith Foray, who's going to be having a show next fall at Dwayne Reed's gallery. Uh, oh, Dr. Wow. Philip Dennis, who's a sculptor and a, a st- uh, he his medical specialty in Illinois in East St. Louis area is, uh, I believe, working with the mentally deranged people and we have Suzanne Marshall who's a world-renowned quilter Uh, she's going to be part of the panel and Barbara Holtz at 95 years old is painting every day drives to her studio and uh, she's this little bitty thing and she paints these six and seven and eight feet tall canvases holy smokes so she, she must be a good ladder climber too. <laughs> she's is always on a ladder which is scary to me but it works for her but she's 95 years young yeah yes 95 years young <laughs> and so the, those will be the panel members uh, that Sarah will talk with wow. and Sarah says that when she interviewed these people and did this film it changed her whole career around she realized she wanted to work with people and not abstractly and and uh, and so she changed and decided to get involved in the man in people and o- working directly with older people give us the time and place on that again it, April 20th April 20th which is a Saturday afternoon 2 p.m. at the St. Louis County Library headquarters on South Lindbergh across the street from the entrance to Plaza Frontenac. Right. And uh, I count us very fortunate because getting a room to pro- have a program at the county library, especially the, the Lin- headquarters branch, is not easy. And they... they uh, we're just wonderful about wanting to do this program. Parking is free. Everybody should come. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the St. Louis County Library is another reason why we have such richness in this community. They do so much to foster, you know, the arts. They, they do. do. And they, they love to partner with people. Yeah. I do a program every year with them where we par- partner with the Alzheimer's Association, and we have... Uh, some kind of program with a question and answer afterwards and we promote it very well and people come with notebooks to ask questions because it's a non-threatening way for them to get information that is of great value to them that they can take back to family members too oh very true and and just sitting there in the room i'm sure you learn so very much well you know, just, I, I do. just being yes. a fly on the wall I, yes yeah wow Fabulous. So the county okay, so library, that's... as you were saying, um, does so much, and, and they have probably about 30 events going on during our festival, all of which will give people an opportunity. If they want, they may want to make a self-portrait. There's a place where you can do that. They may want to uh, hear some music. They may want to knit. They may want to do uh, learn about a lot of different things, and this is a good way to find out what you what your interest is and how you want to pr- pursue it. Absolutely. Now, tell us a couple of maybe success stories. You know, someone who's maybe always wanted to do something and never had the opportunity. Or oh, something I have along a gr- I have a great one right Good, now. One. Okay. So uh, there's a, a gentleman I, I met and I was talking with him last year and I said, well, he asked me if I would help him with something. I said, I really can't. I'm very busy right now. It sounds like you have a great project, but I'm doing this. And I explained to him what I did with Maturity and its Muse and the festival. And he said, you know, and I told him that it's a good thing to get exposed to various arts because you might want to do something in your re, in your retired years or now. Because he was um, maybe in his 50s. He said, hmm, I've always wanted to play the harmonica. And I said, I have just the person for you. Because uh, I had met, re-met a man that was my first date in grade school practically oh my goodness. who plays the harmonica so i i introduced th- this gentleman to my friend and he started taking harmonica lessons at uh the community college because my friend was giving them in, at night and now he goes and he jams with with them so <laughs> it, it, so it's it's great because 
I can be a conduit. And I can find, if someone says they want to do something, through what I've been doing for the past 10 years, I have a, a, a Rolodex sort of in my head of who might be uh, the right person for them to get to know. You're just a natural born networker is well, what you I are. Like to, <laughs> the connector. That, yeah, I like the to connector. connect. I like to see people be happy. That's well, the I key. do too. That's you know, it's it. funny somebody will say something and you say, oh, you know, you've got to meet this person. You know, yeah, it's, that's, it's, that's just it's a, great. It's a nice thing to be able to uh, make people expand out of their normal or, or what they have have every doing every day into something new and get excited about it. Oh, absolutely. Now tell me, if people are interested in learning more about Case Fest, where do they go? How do they find out more about this? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I asked. Um, I, Maturity and its Muse has a website, which is www.maturityandtsmuse.org. And if you go to that and you backslash calendar, everything that's, that's happening in our 10 days and all of the information about if you might need to make an advance registration, not, not buy a ticket, but some, some places like to have an idea so they have enough chairs set up. Uh, so that's how you find it. And if I could spell out maturity and its muse because it's a little yeah. tricky. Yeah, it's the A-N-D, not, a, yes, not matu- a neighbor's end. It's yeah. A-N-D and its is I-T-S muse, M-U-S-E. Dot O-R-G. Yeah. And it's such a great, uh, great title, too. Maturity and its muse. I mean, it just, it has a lilt to it. But well, it's, it, it's, you know, it, it says what it is, because uh, to me, it's, it's really all about age being what, it, it takes us along. It and it, it's what we work with. Very true. Is there a number that people can call just in case uh, they're not so computer sure. friendly? You know, because not everybody is. I I, I know that. Yeah. Uh, you could call area code, and I hope you do. Please call area code three one four four two zero one four four four. And guess what? You'll get me. <laughs> and what a delight! <laughs> so, and I'd be happy to tell, answer any questions and give you any guidance that that you would like. Tell us about a couple other the of, of the uh, things that are going on with Case Fest. We have we have a new event this year, uh, uh, called, which is Vitality Ballet, and this will be on Thursday, April twenty fifth at ten thirty in the morning at Coca in one of the studios and. Uh, there's a, a young woman named Vanessa Woods who contacted me several years ago uh, when she was getting this this type of program started. She actually came to St. Louis. Uh, she's a ballerina, and she came to St. Louis uh, to be uh, dance with the St. Louis Ballet Company. And uh, through what I think she had an illness, uh, some something physical, which has kept her from performing. Mm. So she decided that she wanted to go in to um, exercises and ballet movements for older people. And the, she uh, started when when I met her several years ago. She did a, a water aerobic program for our festival, and this year she called and she'd like to volunteer to do a, a ballet uh, for people, it, and it's chair m- ballet. You know, it's so it's chair Remarkable. movements, exercise in a studio at, at Coca, come be a dancer for the morning, and dance with a ballerina. I mean, how many chances do you get to do that these days? Very rarely. And uh, you know, to wear comfortable clothing, it's it's free. Uh, she'd love to see as many people as possible. She's very excited about doing this. And Afterwards, you can go. The Millstone Gallery at Coco is very, very close by this, and they have a wonderful new show up, and you can go wander through the show. So you have all kinds of different arts as an experience that morning. And there's parking in a nearby garage if you want to do that. Yes, they finished that garage not long ago. Yes, that's, that's great news for Which that is, whole area. Which I think is wonderful. And and if here's if if you really want to go to something on our calendar and transportation is not easy for you to find um, if you call 314-420-1444 i'll find a way to get you there 
Oh, that's so it's sweet. a promise. Lynn Hamilton, you are something special. Yeah, you thank really you. are. Now, you said that the uh, Vitality Ballet is a new con- uh, component of this. And you said that you have another Well, we have something thing going on. Uh, on Saturday, um, April 27th at 2 o'clock, uh, we're partnering with the St. Louis Artists Guild and the St. Louis Storytelling Festival. Uh, we've partnered with them before. We, it's a nice trio um, to do things together because the ladies, uh, you did girls before, the, the ladies um, that I work with are really outstanding and there's they never say no about anything. But uh, because it's during the Storytelling Festival, we're having a, a master storyteller uh, named Sue Hinkle. And oh, yeah, and she, and she's uh, I believe she's from Pacific Missouri, and she's going to do stories about women artists. Uh, so if Georgia O'Keeffe is someone you want to hear about, this would be great. And I asked because Frida Kahlo is is on everyone's lips these days. She's someone that is is and she has a wonderful show at the Brooklyn Museum. People really are are into her, and so she's going to. Uh, talk about her. So I think it will be a a, a fabulous program uh, to really get involved with storytelling. And as I've learned, there are people that love storytellers and follow them all over the country. So it, we're really lucky to have a great festival here and uh, for, yes, for Case Fest to be part of it. Oh, I think it's just tremendous. I yeah. really do. We're talking, just in case you happen to tune in here a few moments ago, I'm talking with Lynn Friedman Hamilton, who is the executive director of Maturity and its Muse. And uh, although I don't think either one of us is ever going to really grow up. No, of course not. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. And uh, we, let me give that that uh, web address one more time. It's Maturity and, and is spelled out, Maturity and its muse dot org and then if you want to know what all's going on do slash calendar right and now you have something else you want to tell us well about. i was i really would like to highlight um a program at lawmeyer uh, it's called throw and grow and uh, i'm very lucky because i have a young lady that's been helping me out for several years uh recent MFA graduate uh, from Washington University. Her name is Sarah Harford, and she is in the education department at Lawmire now, and she is volunteering to do a program called Throw and Grow. Uh, it's from 1 to 3.30 on uh, Wednesday, April 24th. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, w- the program we did it last year, and you sit. We sat outside, and it's just glorious to sit out on the um, terrace at Lawmire and and look out at the sculpture. I mean, you you feel like you're you're in heaven. Yeah. It's so beautiful, and so we make little throw throw pots, that a uh, little pinch pots, and p- we paint them with faces. But inside, we put seeds. And so when you go home or wherever, you could throw them in the lawn. And before you know it, you got something growing. Isn't that great? So that's, that's something fun to do. It, and it would and be grow. good for energy. You know, if you had uh, intergenerational is something that I'm, I'm very um, um, big on. Uh, because I think that the more the generations get together, the better it is for all of us. Okay. So it, this is a, a fun thing if, you, if you're a grandmother and you want to bring a a grandchild, a mother, and a you know any any group of people would have a good time to get doing this. A garden club would have fun coming. Sure, they would. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, you have the the little you know plants. So you as have a some. Memento. Yes, you have a, you have a favor oh. out of out of your happy time. That's a lovely yeah. idea. Yeah, and, something to remember the whole thing yeah. by. And, and, uh, I mentioned intergenerational, which reminds me of a young woman I'm working with this year, and I'd like to give a shout out to Molly Davis. Molly is a student at Washington University, and I was introduced to her by several different people. And uh, Molly is very, in, very inv- eager to become more involved with. Uh, Older people, she's changing her major, I believe, to be go into ger- geriatrics, gerontology, which, of course, I applaud because yes. we need more people. And mm-hmm. uh, she's volunteered to do the social media for the festival. So anything that's on Facebook, uh, and she did something about my being here today, and she did something yesterday about the county library, uh, anything, that that's Molly's, Molly's doing. 
Fantastic. And so, uh, Good for I'm, you, Molly. I'm really lucky. <laughs> Good for yes. you, Molly. Keep it up. Yes. Keep it up. Well, I thought what we might do is just to recap one more time all these wonderful things going on at Case Fest. Uh, we've, we've got that. And all you need to do to find out all the specifics of yes. what's going on. And by the way, you know all these times and days and everything that Lynn is sharing with us? She's got it all by heart. She's not referring to notes. She's got it <laughs> She's got it between her ears, you know. <laughs> but uh, if you want to see it in print on, on your computer screen, go to Maturity and Its Muse, all spelled out, dot org. org slash calendar. And if you have any other questions, give Lynn a call. You bet. 314-420-1444. Thank you. Anything else? I look forward to welcoming every single person possible to these events. And I, I'm sorry I couldn't tell you more about the Banjo Club and more about uh, the Center for Aging with Chancellor Wright and speaking and on and on and on. But uh, the welcome mat is out for all of you, and I'm I'm going to be there to greet you. I, I, I love this. This is my favorite 10 days of the year. Well, and what a gracious hostess. Uh, and as I said before... I love doing this. I love meeting everyone. I love partnering with all these organizations. And, and this is not last but least, this is important, I love coming here and being with Kathy. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lynn. I truly think that we've perhaps touched out and uh, ignited a few people this morning to let them know about all these fabulous things going on, starting on the 18th and running through the 28th of yes. April. What a great thing for April where everything's growing anyhow. <laughs> well, that's great. Yes, that's a good idea to well, think of it that way. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for everything you do for our community. And this is such a wonderful, gracious, and generous thing that you do. It's it's just, uh, it's very deeply reaching and, and far-reaching. And it's it's just a, a marvelous, marvelous mission that you're on. Thank you. Thank you. I thought what we might do is play a little piece by Sibelius. It's not very long. It's just less than a, less than a couple minutes, but it's called Musette. Ooh. A little muse, yes? Okay. <laughs> and this is Rachel Barton Pine, violinist, and Matthew Hagel, piano. Sibelius's Musette with Rachel Barton, Pine violinist, and Matthew Hagee, piano. And once again, that information, April 18th through the 28th is the Case Fest, all under the umbrella of maturity and its muse. Our thanks to Lynn Friedman Hamilton, Executive Director, for having been here this morning and sharing her lovely spirit with us. Once again, the email, I mean, not the email, but the uh, 
site address is Maturity and Its Muse, maturityandittsmuse.org slash calendar, and be part of this marvelous, marvelous offering of all these great things that Lynn's up to.